Any preacher given the task of preaching to these readings this morning has an embarrassment of riches to wrestle with. We have a story about complicated, larger-than-life King David and his larger-than-life appetites. And as if that weren't enough, we have not just one but two of the top ten all-time Jesus stories this morning from John's Gospel, the two stories that were edited out of the Gospel we heard last week, the feeding of a large, hungry crowd that has been following Jesus, and the calming of a storm that is threatening to capsize the little boat carrying his disciples across the Sea of Galilee. My friends, there is no theme that links together these two readings or these four stories. Each of them has enough fireworks on its own. So rather than choose between them, I want to focus on something else. The quiet, short little reading that we heard, or maybe we didn't hear, from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. It might have just slid right by you as you we're contemplating again that salacious story of David and Bathsheba and poor Uriah the Hittite. So here is one little line from it again. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power of his spirit. All of the wonderful stories from this morning aside, those words, those words are the ones that I think speak most directly to our circumstances today. Our inner being is in trouble. Across Europe and in other parts of the world right now, yet another variant of the COVID virus is causing surges of infections and hospitalizations despite the coming of vaccines. So let me say this plainly, we are tired of this. Yes, we are resilient and yes, we are strong, but this has been a long, hard, arduous time. It is not just that we've lived in ways that feel so constricted and small and locked down. It is not just that we have been worn down by the overshadowing danger that We might get sick and maybe very sick. Beyond all that, we have sustained so much loss in such a compressed amount of time. And I think that is the worst thing of all. We've lost people we love, some of them to this disease. We have lost contact with friends that we took for granted. We've lost ways of being and moving in the world that we thought would never change. This past week I spoke to a friend back home in Massachusetts where we live when we are back in the United States. I asked her how things were going back there. She told me that where we live There has been nothing but rain day after day after day. And in fact, again today, there will be another rainstorm on our little farm. On the other side of the country, the wildfires are consuming whole forests of land. She said to me, it feels like we are living in the end times. Now, of course, we know intellectually that there are causes behind all of this that science can help us understand, but our loss is emotional. Our loss is spiritual. We have more and more knowledge, but less and less certainty. That is perhaps the greatest and most painful of our losses. It's not just our physical health that we are worried about. It is the health of our inner being, that deep place where God's image lives in us that is hurting. Our patron saint here, Saint Paul, understood profoundly how hard it is to be people of faith in a time of uncertainty. 
He knew that when we are in this situation, there are two things that we long for. Knowledge, to understand what is happening and maybe to see what might be coming, and power. Power to protect ourselves and the people, the ideas, the things that we love. People who are living in the midst of uncertainty and fear want knowledge and power. And those things, those desires, tend to get in line ahead of our life with God. What Paul teaches us in what we heard this morning is to link these things together for us in ways that can help us see a little ways ahead of us on the path we're on. But Paul also has something to teach us about being Christians in the midst of uncertainty and the right way of ordering those ideas. Paul knows this about us. We crave knowledge and power for many reasons, but most of all for protection. To reduce uncertainty, yeah, maybe, but most of all to reduce our vulnerability. Then, maybe, if we get that done, our inner being will be safe. Then maybe we can bother with working on our spiritual lives. Paul says that, at least for us, for those of us who have been baptized and made part of the body of Christ in the world, that is seeing it backwards, like looking through the wrong end of the telescope. Instead, he says, we should start by focusing on our inner being, on the health of our relationship with God. And even more dangerously, we have to start with our vulnerability. When we think of being strengthened, when we hear Paul praying that we'll be strengthened in our inner being, we instantly think of going to the gym or doing yoga or working out maybe. So when Paul talks about his hope that we'll be strengthened, we instantly wonder just what it is he's telling us we have to do. But really what Paul is teaching us is that we have to stop defending this vulnerability of ours, this inner being, if God is going to have any chance at all of strengthening us. Because faith is a gift not a transaction. It is given to us, but for us to mean anything, for our faith to grow in any way, we have to step out of the way, open the doors and the windows of our heart, and accept that gift as fully and completely as we can. From that acceptance, from giving God permission to come into our hearts, to have access to our inmost being, from that, Paul says, we get power. And here is where our Christian path begins to diverge from the path the world teaches us. Because that power, yeah, it is strength, but it is not force. It's not the power of this world. It is not power over it is power to. It is enabling power. The source of that power is the deepening presence of Christ's love in us, of our greater awareness day after day after day that God is love and God acts in the world through love. Or to say it in different words, God's power is revealed in and changes the world through love. So it isn't just that God is love, something we say as Christians and we think of as sort of sweet and soft and easy and lovely. When we say that God is love and in the next breath we address God as Almighty God, what we're meant to make is this connection, real power, power aligned with God's purpose is love. God is love, and love is power. The last link in the chain is to our craving for knowledge. 
The power we find in God's love is intended exactly for the purpose of empowering us to find that knowledge. But we're meant to understand that for us, knowledge means something closer to understanding, to comprehending. The world teaches us that knowledge is power, right? That's what they told me when I went off to college. But Paul is teaching us that for Christians, love is power, and power gives us knowledge. The knowledge to comprehend how we are meant to be part of God's loving purpose in the world, and strength to have the courage to act as though we were. My beloved friends, these have been hard days. There are going to be more hard days ahead of us. If we deal with our uncertainty by closing off access to our inmost being, that sacred place where God is meant to live in us, then our faith, our inner being, will only grow weaker. But if we open up the doors and windows and give God's gift of faith a chance to fill us, then we will have new strength and new understanding to be that love and to conquer our fear to be sources of God's assurance in an unsteady and uncertain world. I pray that we can risk it. I pray that we can dare it together. Amen.